So, continuing on, again, this is from the P-Book, uh, Exam 1, and we're looking at graphs, tables, and equations. So we've finished question A, or question 1, part A, and now we're looking at a second matchstick pattern. Um, it uses a slightly different shape and pattern. So formulate the rule that gives the number of matches required to make the nth design of this pattern. So we need some information if we're going to do that. Um, a good way to figure some information out is to make our own table. So we've got the number of matchsticks, sorry, the number of the pattern, we're going to call this pattern 1 and this pattern 2. And we're going to count how many matchsticks are total or needed, so I'll just cross them off as we count through. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So pattern 1 needs 10 matchsticks, and here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And pattern 2 needs 19. And if you're unsure, you could draw a third pattern and get a second, or get a third set of data here, but we should be alright with just this 2. Um, so again, we can use our calculator using the stat function. So if we come back in here, go back to menu, stat, and we are going to clear ourselves a little bit of data. We can go to delete all, yep, delete it, and we'll delete this row as well, or this column as well. Okay, um, just two points to enter, one, two, and we've got 10 and 19. Put them in. Same process. Graph. Graph. Well, we've only got two points, but they look like there should be a straight line. Um, calculate and hit X for the linear equation, and here we end up with the information for our rule. So it's going to be Y is equal to A is 9, so 9X plus 1. And again, our R squared value is 1, so we probably haven't put a typo into the table. So we'll put that in. Y is equal to 9x plus 1. And again, we actually need to make sure we get the correct variables, and we always write x first and then y in our table. So our rule should actually read m is equal to 9 n plus 1. And this is our rule. Okay. So we formulated the pattern, or formulated the rule that gives us this pattern, and carrying on, what are we going to do with it? So use your rule to find the number of matchsticks needed for the twelfth design. So that's n equals twelve, n being the design number. And we can use substitution, m is equal to nine times twelve plus one. If we want, we put the value of n into the equation. And this would give us 9 times 12 plus 1, so that's 108 plus 1, gives us 109. So 109 matchsticks. But again, if you want to double check that with your calculator, we can go menu into table, put in the rule that we have, so we can delete the old rule. And now we've got 9x plus 1. Remember, I always recommend just use the X key instead of trying to find the N or the M or the S or whatever. Just keep the variable simple. Go to our table, come down to number 12, and we see for 12 patterns we need 109 matchsticks, just like we calculated. Okay. Looking at the next part. Um, a little bit too far. Describe how a graph for the number of matchsticks used for design in in this flatter, flower pattern would compare with the graph you drew in part A on question 4, or part A 4 for the first flower pattern design. So actually, I think the best way to do this is to actually graph both of them onto the same graph. So we will flip back in the book one page and find the graph that we did. Just up at the top here. 
and we'll go ahead and identify it. So dot this is for when we had the rule from the previous question, m is equal to 8 in plus 4. And we'll use blue for the next one, which is going to be m is equal to 9 in plus 1. So a couple obvious things we can see here. First off, um, our gradient between these two equations is different, and secondly, our y-intercept is also different. So this equation starts lower at 1, and this one starts a little bit higher at 4, but this one's going to increase at a faster rate. Remember, our gradient is our rate. It tells us how quickly the things will go up. So this blue one, the second pattern, will have a faster rate. Um, and if we have a few of those data points, our table from that, from the calculator, is 1, 2, 3, 4, and we've got 10, 19, 28, and 37. Again, you can just get that from looking in the table here. So we'll put these points on here. Again, there's no zero pattern, so we won't put anything down for zero, but for number one, we're going to go to 10. So it starts out slightly below. For number two, we're going to go to twin, or to 19, which is also slightly below. And for number three, we go to 28. Well, that actually was the same point as before for the last pattern, so there they're the same. And then for point number four, we're going to go to 37. And that's going to be slightly higher than the last one as well. So here we see oops, that our pattern is starting to move. Um, more quickly up the axis. So here we've got our next point in here. And if we carry on, um, we will end up with, let's see what's next, 37, 46. So number 5 going up to 46, that's 45, 46, there we go. So we can see the blue dots are starting out lower, they start below. At pattern number 3, they're the same, they're both 28. And here, it starts to increase at a faster rate. Well, it's still increasing at a faster rate, so we see it actually ends up being larger number of matchsticks, and that, that pattern would continue up. So if we come back down to the question we were trying to answer... Almost there. We're trying to compare m is equal to 9 in plus 1 with m is equal to 8 in plus 4. So describe how the graph for the number of matchsticks used for the design in, in this flower pattern would compare with the previous one. So, first thing that we can talk about is the gradient. So like we saw, our gradient here and here. So we'll call this pattern 1 and we'll call this pattern 2 to simplify. So pattern 1 has a gradient of 8, and pattern 2 has a gradient of 9. This means that pattern 2 will increase at a faster rate. And we can say here the line actually will look steeper. So the, the line will be steeper. Okay. Um, the next thing that we can look at would be the y-intercept obvious thing to talk about here. So pattern 1 starts with a higher y-intercept of 4. Pattern 2, sorry that was pattern 1. Pattern 1, pattern 2 starts lower with y-intercept of 1. 
So this means less matchsticks. Needed at the start. And um, a key thing that we found from comparing those two data points was that at pattern 3, at pattern number 3, I should say, at pattern number 3, both rules um, gave 28 matchsticks. needed. So when in is equal to 3, im was equal to 28 for both patterns. So below in equals 3, pattern 1 used more match 6. And above in equals 3, pattern 2 used more matchsticks. And one thing that we can do if you're curious about that is to actually put it into the table um, just to show you this. If you're not interested you can go ahead and stop at this point, but if we go back to menu table, uh, exit backwards to get to this menu, so we want to put in both of these rules. So we've got the second one that we were going to use, which was um, dang it. So we had 9x plus 1, this rule here, so that's 9x plus 1, and then we'll enter in the second rule as well. I'll put them in the right order so that makes more sense. 8x plus 4, and this one was going to be 9 x plus 1. We've got both the rules put in here, and we can go to table. So x is the same for both of them. This is pattern number 1, 2, 3, 4, so these are the n values. But here we can see the number of matchsticks needed for each pattern. So pattern 1 needs 12 to start with, and pattern 2 needs 10 to start with. So we see pattern 1 needs more to start, and we see that for the first two. At pattern 3, they're the same. And then at pattern four, pattern number four, um, the second rule takes over 37 is more than 36, and we see that it starts to increase at a faster rate, like we'd expect to see with it having a higher gradient. So that's one way that you can kind of look through the information. If you don't have a graph to look at, you can put the two rules into table and look to see how the trends um, change, look to see if there's a point where they both have the same value, like this one where at n equals 3 they both have 28.